Way back in the first unit of this class, we learned that there are two different types of robot joints. Revolute joints, which allow rotational motion of one link relative to another, and prismatic joints, which allow linear motion. So far, we've only been working with revolute joints. Today, we're going to set up a prismatic joint. Now, there are four most common mechanisms that you'll see in robotics that are used to build prismatic joints. There is the lead screw stage, the belt drive, the wheels and track approach, and the rack and pinion. You have a rack and pinion included in your kit, and we're going to start out today by setting up the rack and pinion. Then we will apply what we learned in the last video about feedback on-off control to set the position of this rack and pinion. Back at our motor setup, remove the motor horn gently. Then use your screwdriver to remove the two screws we have holding the DC motor into its bracket. Find the rack and pinion in your kit. Take these two small screws and set them aside for now. Flip the board over and use the screwdriver to unscrew these two screws that are holding the motor bracket onto the board. Now, go get the two degree of freedom Revolute Revolute manipulator that we removed from the board previously. We'll use this manipulator as a support for our rack and pinion. Flip the board over and use the two of the M3 screws to reattach this manipulator to the board. For now, I'm only going to use two screws to hold it down because that's sufficient and will save us a little bit of time. Next, I'm going to remove the marker bracket from the end of the manipulator. The marker bracket is right now attached to the angle bracket. I'm going to remove both the marker bracket and the angle bracket together. I'll use the long M3 screws and a nut on the bottom to attach the rack and pinion horizontally like this. Later on, we'll attach the rack and pinion vertically in order to be able to pick things up off the board. But for now, while we're learning to use the rack and pinion, it will be safer to attach it horizontally so we don't accidentally run the rack and pinion into the board and break something. Hold the nut underneath while you screw the screw down with your screwdriver. Next, we'll attach the motor. Slide the motor up through the motor shaft hole. And we'll use the two small screws that we set aside a moment ago. Now find the pinion. The pinion has a flat edge just like the motor shaft does. Rotate the pinion so that the two flats match up and also so that the gear teeth of the pinion and the rack match up. 
If you have trouble pressing the pinion on one way, flip the pinion over and press it on the other way. Some of these pinions go on much easier one way than the other way. When you have the pinion on, you should be able to easily slide the rack back and forth and have the pinion turn. If you still have this code to turn the motor off for five seconds at the after the while loop, delete this code. Now, let's add some code to display the count to the LCD screen. We'll clear the display. Set the position to the first row in the first column. And for now, we'll display the count difference. For our rack and pinion, we don't need to have two count values to keep track of the position. We only need to have one count value. So let's delete one of these two count numbers. And then change the name of count one just to count. Let's delete some of these other variables that we don't need and create a new variable to hold our target count. This will be like our target position in our control algorithm. Let's make two target count positions so that we can make our rack and pinion switch from one position to another. Let's set target count 1 to 1000 and target count 2 to 2000. Now, let's clean up this code a little bit. Start by deleting these six lines. In our code, we'll start by setting time equal to zero. Then, while time is less than 5,000, that is, for five seconds, We'll get the current position from the quadrature decoder. Delete this line. Now, we'll check to see if the count is less than the target count. If the count is less than target count 1, we'll turn the motor forwards. Else, if the count is greater than target count 1, we'll move the motor backwards. Else, we'll turn the motor off. Down here, let's print the current position, count. Now, copy this entire while loop, including the initialization of time at the top. Paste it. And this time, instead of going for target count 1, we're going to go towards target count 2. Change it here, too. Now, let's build the code and make sure we don't have any errors. If you have no errors, program the PSOC. Before plugging in the external power supply, pull the rack and pinion so that it's kind of in the middle. We want to do this because we don't know which direction is going to be positive yet. Now, plug in the external power supply and watch what happens. Once you see which direction the motor is trying to go in, pull the rack all the way to one side, hit the reset button, and then let it go.
the rack and pinion should slide between two positions approximately every five seconds. You can run this again by unplugging the external power supply, moving the rack all the way to one side, hitting the reset button on the PSOC, and then plugging in the external power supply. When we unplug the external power supply, we can freely move the rack back and forth, and we can watch the position on the screen. When you do this, you can see that the count is going between its minimum point, zero, and its maximum is 3,000. This will help us to set positions that we want on the rack and pinion, knowing that from one side to the other side is 3,000 counts. You'll also notice as you watch the rack slide from side to side that our control is still unstable. Even after the rack comes to a stop, the motor is jittering violently back and forth. We would like to have the motor come to a stop when the rack gets to the correct position and not continue jittering back and forth. We could get the rack and pinion to move faster by changing the compare value. We can make this number as high as 100 to get it to move at its maximum speed. But this will also increase the instability in the motion. We have used on-off control as a first example of feedback control in this video. In the next video, we'll look at a couple of ways of improving the stability of this control.